What's up guys, welcome to a new video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the rear rotors and rear pads on your Mazda Speed 3. This is for a Gen 2, uh, should be 2010 to 2013. Um, these ones are toast. I mean, there's not much to it. N no pad, rotors are shot. Um, also, the, the rear brake shield is getting really rusty, so we're going to put a layer of some undercoating over that, so it hopefully prevents it from rusting any further. Maybe clean up the wheels a little bit. All right, first things first, jack up the back tires and chalk your front wheels so it doesn't move around. Next, we gotta take off these wheels uh, with a 13 16 Now, typically, you would want a, a socket for an impact gun, but I have to use this one that's not for an impact gun um just be easy on it it's because these oz ultra legras they have such a small space where you can fit um a socket in there so i'm gonna go easy on this just so it doesn't you know blow to shreds but take it off Also, it might be a good time to rotate your tires if you haven't done that. Uh, sometimes they're rotational, so just look for that. So here we have our caked on rotor, but as you can see, there is not much pad left. The rear is probably even worse, um, and there's just like a lot of rust on this brake shield. So we're going to put some grease on that after. I should actually undercoat this car because it is a little rusty not bad just all surface rust now there's two bolts you have to take off from the caliper mounting bracket there's one up top here and one on the bottom here um, you can see the top my exposure is a little messed up but this is the one right here you gotta take off and then on the bottom it's right here so it's a 9 16 we have it on there so you're gonna need two hands for this um, I'm gonna have to put the camera down when I do it but you're going to want to use a mallet and tap on this, get it started, and it should come right out without any issues. Just be careful not to strip it. If it's giving you any issues, just use some PB Blaster. Um, you can use heat if you need to, but just be careful of these lines. You do not want to melt those. Um, now, a ratcheting wrench would be ideal here because it is a very small space to get in. Um, it's just tedious. But I got that first one out because we're looking at it. You want to go clockwise uh, to get it out. Make sure you don't go counterclockwise because you're just going to tighten it. You're probably going to strip it. Get it started. And then you should be able to take it off fairly easily okay next on the top of the rotor you have a pin here and you have one on the bottom they just have a little plastic covering uh, just use a flathead to get these off that and this one I don't even know if you need a flathead on them yeah they just come right out I have to use this star bit just because I don't have the right size Allen wrench um, but this is a t45 you have to loosen the pins Uh, they should loosen right up. See if I can do it with one hand. You have to unscrew them enough and then maybe use a flathead screwdriver and kind of push them out. And they should come right out. And that's two. Next, you have uh, this little holding clip. Now, you should be able to use a flathead screwdriver to pop it off. Okay, definitely use WD-40 on that little pin because it was just basically seized. Now, we have to try to get this off. This caliper, but pretty frozen in time. Um, what you want to do is get a pry bar don't use like this but basically 
you're gonna want to put it here kind of wedge it in there um, on the bottom and just kind of wedge it so you can get this whole caliper off um, yeah okay after some prying we got it off this thing looks hideous um, yeah not sure this thing sees some shit um, this should come right off <laughs> well we had a little bit of life left not much um, this thing is freaking caked let's see see they get seized these pads they don't move freely um, they should move freely along here so what we're gonna do we're gonna clean this up with a wire brush um, then we're gonna put some anti-seize lubricant on here and we might even dremel the edges of the pads themselves usually I do that with my truck just so they move freely um, just so they don't get seized uh, so we're gonna go clean this up this is just rusted as hell <clears throat> um, but the next step is to push back uh, this thing compresses and you see these two holes in the caliper you need to basically push in and as you turn so if you have needle nose pliers you can use those you can get creative with it uh, use two screwdrivers really anything uh, you'll see as you start turning it clockwise that it'll start compressing in and you need to do that because the new pads are going to be thicker uh, than these old ones and these were compressed ow <laughs> they were compressed so we have to push that um, we have to push this back just so it fits over the new rotor we also have to take this rotor off so we'll set this aside back here and you need to give her the dinner hit it here and just kind of just don't hit the studs themselves um, just go all around and just wail on it. You need to get it loosened. Might be able to hit it from the back. Just be careful you don't mess up your brake shield. So a few wails and she comes right out. Um, yeah, as you can see, this rotor was pretty shitty too. Um, just all around it just rusts so about time we replace that this brake shield it's not as bad as the other side was um, you still want to wire brush all this off and <clears throat> we're gonna put some grease on it just so it doesn't rust any further you want to try to get to this before it starts rusting um, because technically some places won't even pass you for an inspection uh, if the brake shield's rusted. Uh, so we're just going to, you know, coat it up with some grease. Because that's pretty shitty. Okay, now we have to turn this. I'll try to show you how I'm doing it with one hand. Um, usually you should use something different than wire cutters, but this is all I got. So uh, screw it. All right, so you can see I'm on, if it focuses. So you can see I'm on those two holes and we are just turning it and it is compressing. Um, kind of hard to show you, good with one hand, but that's what you do. Just turn it until it stops turning so it's compressed all the way. And that's basically it. Okay, now that we have this mostly just all the flaking stuff off, um, I'm using New Hampshire oil undercoating. It's this black oil-based um, rust proof coating that I use on all my trucks and my fleet and you can brush it on you can spray it on um, I'm just gonna brush this on though and it makes it look really nice and protects it from rusting any further um, if you have a new car I highly recommend you get an undercoat if you live in New England or if you live anywhere where there's salt um, definitely do this I mean it makes the rust look really good uh and it just protects your vehicle so i highly recommend to do this i do it to all my vehicles now i could have got the 
coated ones that have a black coat around this. Um, or if you didn't get that, I did a video before that you can actually just paint it yourself. Um, I could have got it for like an extra 20 bucks coated, but honestly, not sure if I'm going to have this car even the next six months. Um, I might sell it. I'm not sure. I might do a part out. I just, I don't know. I did what I wanted to do with the car. I wanted to build it. Um, sorry, YouTube channel, and it's got me this far, which I'm grateful for, but <clears throat> I don't know. I don't enjoy it as much as I know I should and as much as I know someone else will. Um, so with that being said, might sell it, might part out. We'll see where life takes us, but as of now, not sure I see this car in my future in the next six months. Might sell it. I just keep going on and off the fence, but yeah, so that's why I did not get the coated ones. But open this up. You see, very nice. So we'll move this out of the way, the caliper. Put that right on. Boom. And now we'll go get our new pads. We have uh, Posey Quiet. I don't know, I got these for Tim. I traded him for like five pounds of scallops. Thank you, Tim. Um, they actually give you new rubber caps. Uh, and then you have the inner pad. Here we go. So sometimes I like to take a Dremel and just shave this down so it moves freely here. Um, we did chip off some rust on this though, so it might be fine. I'm just gonna see first how they how they slide. Um, if they don't slide freely, then we will probably Dremel some off. I mean, you can see that it just, it, it should go freely and it just doesn't. So that's how brakes will um, just seize up. So we're probably gonna go Dremel some of these. All right, I'm gonna go shave these down real quick and I'll be right back. So after you shave it off, you can just see it moves way more freely. Apparently my camera wasn't recording. Um, right now we're applying this NEC's lubricant um, to any surface that will touch the um, little guides on these brake pads uh, just put a little a little goes a long way you don't need to get too crazy with it um, but we have it right in here and here on the caliper bracket where the pads go um, and as you can see after shaving a little bit off it moves pretty freely in here um, so it's perfect we know it's not going to seize up and basically just ruin our pads. So now we just have to basically put it all back together. I'm gonna put the caliper on the bracket with the pads and then we're gonna set it over the rotor. So for the inner pad, you're going to get this uh, little butterfly clip looking thing um, and it just sits right on. All right, now I'm just getting this ready, uh, all mocked up. Start the bolts back up into the caliper bracket just so it sits good. Uh, and then we're just going to tighten these up and then we're going to see if we're going to have to shave this right here because uh, it sits it sits right in here uh, but I think the lip on this is just too big so I think I have to shave it down a little bit. So when you put the new pads in you have to go in and then push it to whichever side it goes to. Uh, the one with that butterfly pin goes in the inner and then see if I can do this with one hand. Just gently pull it back on. Just push it back on into place like that. Uh, kind of hard to do with one hand, kind of hard to show you. Here you can see that butterfly pin is on the inner pad. Um, now this is sitting on the rotor. Now we just have to put those two bolts back in to the caliper. Okay, now that we got those started, just tighten them up with your 9 16ths. All right, now that we tightened up those two bolts, we tightened up these um, pins. Now we just need to put the new caps on. Boom. And boom. All right, so that basically does it. Now, 
Um, the brakes might be a little loose, but they'll be fine once you compress them. Um, it's just you need pressure for that cylinder to kind of push back on it. And that's basically it. So that's basically how to replace your rear rotors and pads on your... Almost forgot, don't forget to put this clip on. You can get it through the wheel though. Mazda Speed 3. Sits on just like that. These pieces kind of go in on the inside of that lip, if you can see that. And then they just go right in here. So that's basically it, guys. Now I'm going to go take it for a spin, see how she feels.